Alright, so here's these little 1002 22,000 kV um, RCM power motors. Um, you can see this thing's pretty quick. Let's get a little punch out here. So that is a pretty solid punch out for a 1S, um, a 1S quad right there, 2 inch quad. Um, I'm throwing this on the uh, Tattoo R-Line battery, and um, admittedly here, um, I left this a little long in terms of, well, I didn't need it a little long, this motor just came out, um, but I haven't been flying uh, this little guy much recently, I haven't actually been flying all that much recently, so I'm a little bit kind of tentative on the sticks. And honestly, don't have like super fresh in my mind how this flew on um, the 1102s. And um, that's kind of relevant here because, in terms of me trying to give you like uh, my impressions, it would have been ideal if I had um, kind of just like fresh memory of how this flew with those Aeolus 1102s, which are 18,000 kV motors. Now, these 1002s, they come in um, a 19,000 kV uh, version, which may, you might sort of say, well, that's going to be like a more equivalent uh, comparison, but I don't think so because of, um, this is a 1002 versus 1102, and the last thing I wanted to do was get the 19,000 kV and then be stuck with kind of the what if, um, you know, so if I was like underwhelmed by it, the what if of like, well, what if I had just gone with 22,000 kV versus this way, if I kind of overpower it, I know I can just stick these on the loop and have a uh, ball bearing motor loop, which is kind of one of the things that's nice about um, these 1002s is that you've got the double ball bearings instead of bushings. And weight wise, um, this really isn't going to be. Um, much if any different than than on the uh, um, uh, 0802s. Now some people are reporting that they feel heavier, um, and I think that's definitely going to be true if you're used to flying on those uh, happy model, um, they call them the EX, you know, they have, have these kind of ultralight ones. And, but from the Aeolus that I'm flying on, which are you know, a little bit chunkier than those. I think it'd be a direct kind of comparison weight wise. I'm gonna throw them on the scale and see and confirm if I'm right on that. So, you know, honestly, one of my predictions about these um, was not um, true. One of my predictions was that I was gonna be overwhelmed or underwhelmed, sorry, by the power. I think the power's fine. I mean, this is the bigger issue right here. So, we're kind of flashing low battery, and that's not coming up, so I'm going to land that. Yeah, it's coming down real fast, so let me get that out of the air, see where it bounces up. So this is going to recover uh, just in the 3.5. I'm going to unplug that real quick. So what I've popped in now, let's see what kind of flight time we get out of this. This is now that red label 720. Uh, this is a big battery for 2-inch props. Let's see how it carries it. I haven't actually tried this combination yet, so I'm kind of curious. Let's try the punch out, see what it does. That's not bad, geez. That's a huge battery, and this thing's lifting it. So, that's kind of fascinating. Um, now, how does it feel? You know, I pull out the three inch kind of compare, but last night I was flying a three inch on this back to back um, on this R lines and some of the GMD batteries. And one of my hard part here is I really don't like this high camera placement. So I've got this uh, EI camera, um, the Nubi drone mount, which puts it up high, which is a really popular mount. And I just, what I feel is with this camera mount, instead of rotating around the camera, I feel like the camera flops back and forth and I feel like I feel like I'm on a boat rocking back and forth instead of being like in the middle of the rotation. I don't feel like 
the quad is rotating around me, which is um, interestingly enough when they design roller coasters, um, they do rolls and stuff like that. They design them so that they rotate around without your heart, because that gives you a feel that the roller coaster is rotating around yourself. And I, I think that's what kind of throws me off about this camera position is that I don't feel like the camera, the quad is rotating around me. I feel like it's kind of, you know, rocking back and forth, which I don't, so that always makes it a little bit hard for me because I find the 3-inch quad where I have the camera I like it using my slam canopy, um, I just feel more comfortable with that camera position. And so it always makes me feel a little bit um, unfair in terms of judging the 2-inch in terms of how does it handle, um, how intuitive or not intuitive it is. Um, I'm going to try a little bit of this tighter stuff. I haven't done this for a while. I am really, really rusty. so. Bear with me if this looks awful. But let's see how this feels. Damn. I need to unrustify myself and do this thing justice. See if they're rusty. Damn. That's not bad, I could do it. My timing's a little bit off here. But anyway, so um, you can on that last battery, so that was, you know, well under 3 minutes 30 seconds, on the 1102s I was looking back at some footage, and I was easily getting above 4, maybe not easily, but I was definitely getting a kid definitely above 330, um, more like 4, more like 415, and what are we going to do here with uh, 300, I'm kind of surprised it lifts this battery, it's kind of you know, I guess you throw enough KV at the problem, right? And um, it does okay. I guess one of the other things, so you notice right now, see that flashing core temperature 83? That's one of the things to consider here too, is it is warm out. Um, I'm flying in the desert in 100, 507, some degree temperature. So that may also, it's, um, that may also play a factor in terms of warming things up to where you lose some efficiency. And so when we compare flight times from uh, more favorable temperatures to now, maybe that's explaining some of the difference. I don't think it's explaining all the difference, but maybe that's kind of a factor here too. So, um, no, so sloppy, sorry about that. So anyways, I think these, um, these motors are viable. Uh, they certainly are. If the niche you're going for is this little tiny rocket ship that's very lightweight, very low um, dry weight. And let's see, so we're at, you know, kind of flashing low battery here, 430. It's gonna rebound, but I don't know. Let's see where it rebounds. 3.51, 3.52. Um, let me throw in one more. Definitely more floaty than with that uh, 700. Let's do this punch out. Let's look for the oscillation here. Man, that's a pretty good punch out. Actually, again, come on, this is like... That's pretty good for a little two inch. So that's a pretty good punch. Out. I've got some another motor I'm excited about. I just ordered them today, so they should be in. I don't know sometime next week. Hopefully before I go on vacation, so I can have a little bit more oh, no, direct comparison. Sorry about the sloppy fun. Uh, so I've got some of the newbie drone, 1102 flow motors, 19,000 kV. Um, and they've got uh, the PCB board, so you can change the motor wire length. And they come with, I think, pretty, pretty long motors. I've been seeing a couple of people uh, flying them with the 65 millimeter props. So that's kind of like everything old and new again for me, because that's kind of back to the original Skyrider formula, which is uh, the original one I was flying was uh, the Jeff RC 1102s, uh, 14,000 kV with 65 millimeter props on props. And 
um, those unfortunately the FRC motors disappeared, and I didn't want those motors. They're funny. They they were pretty good, but they had poor efficiency for the power. They definitely had more kick than the happy models, um, but not really proportional to the amount of extra power. So you you got the extra power, but you paid a pretty big efficiency penalty. And people are reporting with the movie drone. So like Patrick J. Clark is saying with his movie drone loading two flows. Um, getting three to four minutes on a 300 milliamp battery, so using the nitro nectar and doing all right, which is pretty surprising to me, especially so those are chunky motors. They're for them at 3.5 grams, it's like 3.48 or something like that. They're listed as that's pretty heavy for an 1102, um, but he's getting pretty good flight time. People are liking them, so I'm kind of excited to try those out. Um, kind of go back to some of what used to be my favorite setup in terms of the 65 millimeter prop. I'm going to try them also on these um, the gym fan 2 inch props. I really like these a lot of these 2015s. These are really nice props. I just wish they were a touch bigger. I wish they were like a 55 or 60 millimeter prop. Granted, I don't think this would be the right motor if these props were any bigger. So for this size prop, I think this is kind of right in terms of like, okay, what's the minimum motor you need? This is probably it right here. And so, a little battery left, let's see. And I think that's done, so. Yeah, three minutes. So three minutes on, on the 450. All right, let's unplug, let's go to bench and talk some more. 